and uh, thanks to the CRC staff for having me uh, today. Um, first, I would like to very shortly introduce Maybe. myself. It's okay. Um, I come from the North School of uh, Architecture in, in France, and this year I had the opportunity to work on a thesis about uh, urban exclusion and the safety uh, safety planning of uh, urban planning and uh, all the problems of exclusion which uh, appears in uh, many many cities of the Western Europe. I say Western Europe because um, I try to um, to only work on the cities I personally knew because uh, I don't know how it happens in other cities like uh, in Europe or in other parts of the world. But well, the the problem is is uh, that um, I observe that in uh, many cities uh, of France or of uh, Germany or Great Britain, the, the the cities were becoming more and more hostile, and uh, particularly uh, for homeless people or uh, I don't know uh, skaters or many uh, many citizens of the city. So that's why I decided to work on uh, of this team and. Uh, this is what I'm, uh, I will present you tonight. So, I, um, I tried firstly to, uh, to, to name all these uh, phenomena or um, objects which are objects of uh, exclusion. For instance, you have objects like this, or this, in Bristol this in Brussels or in this in the United Kingdom. The common point of all these objects is to exclude persons or uses. For instance, this is made for avoiding, I don't know, homeless people or just citizens to sit on a place. This one is made to avoid for someone pissing on the wall. Or this one is uh, simply made to avoid uh, someone to lay down and, uh, and uh, sleep on uh, a warm surface. surface. So the first part of my work was to try to name all those devices because the problem that is uh, there is no precise word to, to call all these objects or or stuff that you can find in the city. The only precise name which exists, which is official, is uh, crime prevention through environmental design, which is the name of a method, but not the name of objects or uh, of material things. So I firstly tried to, to name a very large nebula of devices or a very large cloud of things. So. Uh, First, I would like to present you some words which were written by Alex Andrew, which is a, a, a British uh, journalist who was forced to, to live like four months in the streets as a homeless uh, person. So he says poverty exists as a parallel but separates reality. City planners work very hard to keep it outside our field of vision. So, the problem is that uh, there is a problem of view and a problem of vision of poverty or um, the, of what are the, the bad behaviors of the citizens in the city. He also says it is easier to see him, the homeless man, and ask only the unfathomably self-central question, how, the, how does his homelessness affect me? So we cooperate with urban design and work very hard at not seeing because we do not want to see poverty uh, and so on. And Alex Andrew called this an apartheid. Uh, sorry. So I felt apartheid was a very, very good word for for um, calling these phenomena. For instance, in in France, in my country. 
unfortunately, unfortunately this was in my country. In uh, like two years ago, uh, the, on the day before the Christmas night, the, the, the city of uh, Angoulême decided to build like fences or grids all around the, the benches of the city just because people didn't want to see poverty or homeless people for the Christmas night. So a lot of newspaper of uh, my country uh, talked about uh, those, those Angoulême benches and it was a, a real scandal, especially on the internet. So I wonder what exactly is uh, this category of uh, very large things that all, all of them aim to only excluding uses or persons or or bad behavior. So I wondered myself, is this only about urban furniture or is this also about uh, temporary devices like the fence uh, the, the, the cities uh, put in place when there is a, an event or a manifest manifestation in the city? It is, is this also about street flooring? Is this about uh, even architecture itself, like uh, all the buildings? are made in the city. So, um, I tried to... My, my first work was to, to try to, to find a world that could name all those things, all those material things, and I thought um, the, the, the French world dispositif was very, um, very um, um, accurate to, to name this. The, the, the English translation is device, but it's not exactly the same meaning and signification, because this word refers to the, the Latin word dispositio, which had already a sense of management and planning, and this word dispositio had itself Greek origins, it was invented to traduce the Greek, the Greek word oikonomia, which was a theological word, a religious word, which was uh, invented uh, by uh, the first, uh, the first people of the of the Christian Church to call the gods, God's management of the earth and the Christians, and how God manages the the, Christ, the Christians and the souls to, to to the paradise, to salvation, to the to the good. Uh, to, to good behavior. So the word dispositive um, was very important to, in my work because it contained all those, those meanings and all those uh, significations. It was it's, uh, involving uh, providential, political, uh, and uh, it's a word of government and it also, uh, it also involved a very strong spatial meaning in, in the, for instance, uh, it, it, it really, uh, it really, uh, it calls, uh, it is about planning, <laughs> it is about political planning. In the beginning, the world was, uh, was used to, to, to concern God, and now uh, other, other people are, are governing, uh, are governing, uh, the, the citizens uh, and plans to, uh, to to make the city uh, to and plans to to, to make uh, the users of the citizens uh, to uh, good behaviors. So today, those devices, dispositive, uh, are trying to uh, to deter, to dissuade the citizens from having bad behaviors. So this is the word I, I choose to uh, to call all these uh, these objects. So I try to make uh, an inventory of uh, all these things, and I try to um, I try to put them in categories. <laughs> so let me present you my category. The first one, I, I call it anti-staticity, because it's, it is made for you to, to move, simply. For instance, the first one is, a, is here to avoid beggars to stay at the bottom of the entrances. 
the other one has made, are made for avoiding a homeless man to sleep uh, in front of your building and so on and so on. He <laughs> reads the second category and simplificating. So the use, the anti-use is quite clear. This is uh, another very famous category, especially on the internet, because uh, I don't know, lots of people put uh, a lot of uh, photos of uh, these anti-skateboarding devices. There, is, there are also a lot of devices uh, which are very often integrated into architecture itself. Yeah, um, the, the funny story is about the, the one in the corner in the, the top right. It is a it is a, fen, a fence of a building uh, designed by the very famous architects Herzog and uh, De Meuron, and uh, it is made to deter graffiti. And uh, ironically, it is it is designed above the graffiti uh, uh, universe, so it's quite uh, horrible. There are also lots of seats uh, which are designed. Either not to sit too long or or not to not to to lay down on them. There are also audio and light devices. For instance, the first one, which is called the mosquito, is uh, bringing uh, ultra very very high sound. It's a very pristine, ultra zvuk. Цей прислі використовується для категорії молодих людей, те, що росіян не розповів. Саме наймолодші категорії людей можуть чути ультразвук, і саме цей пристрій посилає ультразвук для того, щоб розсіювати натовп молоді, які збираються. І він дуже ефективний зі спів Росіяна, такий міліцейський пристрій. Thank you, Dana. <laughs> and so the other one, uh, for instance, uh, classical music in the parking to deter young people, or uh, like uh, here you say, Gopnik, uh, <laughs> to stay in groups in the parking. Uh, oh, we're gonna st we're gonna put some Mozart or um, classical things to to make them go away because. Uh, and uh, the last one is, uh, for instance, blue blue lights. In the entrances of the parkings to avoid the toxico toxico drug people to drug themselves with the syringes. That's not it. There are also checkpoints and facing, for instance, facing avoiding the application of stickers. Or anti clan paintings, or anti graffiti paintings in the Berlin subway. So I tried, after naming all these objects, devices, dispositives, to make an inventory and just to see uh, what we're talking about. So then I tried to search to, in history the points on. Uh, from which uh, all this began. Uh, I, I wondered uh, this couldn't have been existed for every time, so I tried to, to see, uh, to search in the history of the cities, in the Western world cities, when, from when we, 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 be, we, we began to, to try to um, organize people on how to, to make the cities safer. And uh, I, f I found a, a very interesting situation, of, uh, it is the situation of the cities in the 19th century, because uh, the cities in the 19th century are evolving very quickly. You have uh, industrial industrialization, you have uh, uh, a rising, uh, rising flow of people, you have uh, a, a huge rise of criminality. So it is at the same time the period in which discipline appeared and in which discipline was uh, rising very strongly. For instance, uh, uh, in Rochefort, in France, you have, you have uh, in this city 
which was a, a very important city in uh, exportation and uh, navigation from America or other, other parts of the world, there was a need to control uh, all the indig individuals who were coming or coming out or coming in the city uh, and also for merchandise or, or things who were coming to the city by ships who were then going in the, the rest of the world. And so in uh, 1790 you have the first Portugal Hospital which was designed and placed here at the entrance of the city and which, might, which was made in order to control every person or merchandise coming in or coming out of the city like uh, who are you, uh, are you, are you ill, uh, did you take uh, ill in uh, other countries, uh, can it uh, uh, contaminate, no, can it, uh... Uh... it, it is also a problem of uh, hygienism or, um, or wholesomeness, it is in order to control and to, to make the city safer about uh, about uh, pandemias uh, like the plague or etc. Mm -hmm. The other the other um, places of the right of discipline is the school. For instance, uh, uh, in the beginning of the 19th century, the schools, the public schools, began became to to be more and more. Um, um, more and more uh, grid, uh, I don't know what to say, um, became more and more structure, yes. The best, the best pupils were placed on the top of the, of the classroom and the bad pupils were placed on the bottom of the, class, of the, in the classroom. So this also participated to the rise of discipline. Obviously, the, the invention of the Panopticon by Jerry Bentham, a British man, a British architect who invented the system of the Panopticon. It means that you have all the cells of the prisoners which are uh, um, placed around a single point. The, the Panopticon, which means in Greek to see everything. So you have this uh, very kind of image. Uh, <laughs> of a prisoner repenting in front of the, the Panopticon. So the, the main thing about this uh, architectural invention is that a single man can survey and control all the prisoners in the, in the building. There is also transform, transformation of the cities, like uh, the transformation of Paris in the 19th century from a very organic uh, urban, uh, urban, urban fabric to a very strict and uh, linear urban fabric like this one, the one you can see today in Paris. It was made in part of, because of the riots who happened very often in the capital in the 19th century. In the first I made you can see uh, the the image of a riot in Paris in, in uh, 1830, in the ancient Paris with ancient buildings, very small streets, very, very small and organic streets which were not, not, um, not straight at all, and the, 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 the urban planners of Paris tried to make, to destroy most of the of these streets to, to have larger and straight streets in order to to make in order to deter the the, the creation of barricades and uh, in order to make easier the intervention of the army and uh, of cannon. Mm -hmm. So discipline was a very important factor of what made our cities more and more not yet hostile but they 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 became discipline was the phenomenon who explained 
why our cities were more and more safer or try to be more and more safer. It is a term which is very strongly related to the, the concept of individuality and in the identification, the identification sorry, means uh, it helps the uh, police, for instance, to recognize an individual or a person in the streets. Uh, it's very strongly related to hygienism, uh, how we make people healthy and how we make the streets healthy to avoid pandemias. And it is also very strongly related to efficiency, rationality, and norms. And this goes uh, very close, close. It is very close to the, the expansion of the industrialization of uh, the, the European countries. And the view is a, a very important medium in uh, all that new concept because. As you, you, you could see some uh, images uh, before, in the prison, the view is the most important uh, media in the, street, in the new streets of Paris also. The, the main aim is to see and to recognize uh, the in individuals. And I thought this was the beginning of, of today what we call uh, hostile cities or and it, it, it really helped to, to make the police uh, come in, the, in, the, in downtown and to, and to exclude uh, and to take homeless uh, people, etc. There is also a very, a very strong uh, transformation in the second part of the, of the, 18th, of the 20th century, sorry. After the the tide of, uh, of a very large social social housing districts, for instance, this book uh, written by uh, the American writer Oscar Newman is very expressive. You can see uh, it's about criminality in uh, in, uh, in the very large social housing districts in New York and in the eastern parts of America. So the theory of Oscar Newman was very important in the rise of criminology in the second part of the 20th century because his theory was to say today people can't live in, uh, in those very large modernist social housing districts. For instance, uh, this one is a very famous uh, failed of the, of, uh, of the social housing in America. It is put I go, and it was destroyed in the early, in the late 70s, and uh, the explosion of the buildings were transmitted all over the country by TV. So it was uh, really important for the for the image of uh, architecture at that time. So he says uh, today uh, we have to come back to. A to a shame which is more organic, he says uh, today uh, you can't uh, you can't just build a building which is an object um, staying on the ground. You have to develop uh, several um, territories and several spaces. Like on, he, on this shame, he, he draws public space and semi-public space and semi-private space and finally the, the housing. So it's helped to, to the rise of what we call in architecture postmodernism because it was a, a, it was a, a very strong a very strong uh, uh, envy to, to, to come back to ancient methods and ancient uh, typologies of, of building and housing. And his work was very very based on, the, on criminology and he was the first to, to put criminology on, uh, on plants and on space. At that time criminology was only was only um, yeah. 
written on statistics, for instance, this category of people are very dangerous, or etc. And Oscar Newman was the first to draw on plants and to, to recognize in, in the space where was the, the main... He, he was the first man who, who tried to, to, to find a link between criminality and space and architecture. For instance, in, the, in this image, which is called Fear Map, he, he went in the district, he asked the inhabitants, according, according to you, uh, which, which are the spaces you, are, you do not want to, to go, uh, which are the most, the most dangerous? And then, after asking this question to uh, like uh, 50, 60 inhabitants, he drew this map, and you can in fact recognize the, state, the places which are the most dangerous places of the neighborhood. He also drew statistics about the, the places inside the architecture. For instance, uh, this is about criminality in the, the several places, for instance lobbies, um, building grounds, uh, lobbies, elevators, etc. So, his work were, was about putting criminology into space and into architecture. And his work is very strange because he tried to, to provide sort of solutions to, for instance, this is a chapter in his book which is uh, about how can we make a modernist social housing district more safer. But he puts in place fences and uh, he, he draws very precise roads and uh, it's kind of uh, very particular. But his work had a very strong uh, impact in criminology at that time. And it also explains several, several aspects of urbanism in the, from the 80s, 90s and even today. So today we have very current and uh, very trends which are spreaded in many, many cities. For instance, CCTV. I see CCTV I, as a, a high-tech uh, version of uh, Panopticon, the prison we saw some images. For instance, uh, this one uh, in Marseille, uh, in France, uh, is, uh, was, uh, was put at the, at the same time in which uh, a very strong, uh, a very strong uh, event was planned in the city, so the event was uh, a, was uh, the, the cause of the appearance of the CCTV because uh, the, the city of Marseille said yes, so we have to make the city more safer for the events. There will be a lot of people, so we have to to make to, to put more and more cameras. You also have the stadiums, with, which were very important into the, the design, into the, the rise of the design of uh, managing the flows of people and not the people, the, not the people themselves, but mainly the flows of people. For instance, this riot, which happened in Brussels in uh, the 1980s, were very was very very strong and there were several people killed in this in this riot in a stadium at a football competition. So the stadiums were like laboratories of uh, of uh, how we can control better the, the flow of the, of the people and avoiding the two important mass of people grouping together. So it is a place where high tech devices were were well developed and then it was moved to the city. So the stadiums were just the, the, lab the laboratories to, to design all these high tech devices. The, tram the tramways also, uh, for instance, this is the, the tramway of the city of Strasbourg, which was designed uh, like a bit badly because, uh, because uh, the, the city planners decided to make all the, tram the tramway lines to converge at the same point 
and they discovered that uh, that uh, there was at this point a lot of crimes and uh, insecurity because uh, today the tramways are very important into the the effect of spreading people into the streets and uh, it today it is very taken um, seriously about criminal, criminal there are also events as, as I was saying today um, the main events are in the city like the events which are planned by the city are very structured and normal For, on this image you can see that uh, the crowd the citizens are all parked behind a fence and they just watch uh, something this is we can we, we can call it an event but uh, maybe this is not a, a real party and also you can see that all the entertainment staff is totally melted with the security staff so it's not really it's not really uh, human and also in the urban renewal in uh, the, the, the old districts of social housing housings which have problems of insecurity and crimes we urban planners try to 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 apply all these concepts or extreme visibility and uh, how again people can recognize uh, the strangers or the people who can uh, who can uh, walk down the buildings you also have the phenomenon of uh, privately owned public spaces some cities like london is very very touched by this uh, this aspect for instance you can see uh, you can walk in london in like streets and then you realize you're in a public space but which is owned by a firm or a company so this is public space but it has its own rules so for instance is in this one you can you cannot skateboard you cannot uh, cross uh, the street with your roller and uh, it is very dangerous because some parts of the city became becomes uh, more and more uh, more and more uh, ruled by uh, private uh, private people on the private uh, rules so for instance in this uh, in this documentary by the German TV you can see uh, the director of uh, a private street which is this woman and she she crosses the the, the street uh, in the morning, uh, she takes. Uh, she she comes to see all the, the sellers in the in the in her streets, and she acts like a mayor. But she's not a mayor. She's just a director, and it's uh, they, 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 their main their main aim is not to, to make this, the the street more and more uh, interesting. They just they are just interested in to remaining the city the, the streets clean or. Uh, they are just uh, they are just uh, uh, thinking about uh, are there homeless people in our streets, etc. Uh, another phenomenon you can uh, observe in many cities is the mineralization of the floor and of the environment. For instance, uh, in those cities you can uh, can observe that there are no many benches or no many trees and you just have a very large uh, very large flooring of mineral uh, flat stones so it encourages people to walk and only walk and uh, it really deters people to stay and to sit or to to invest the public space to make something the main aim here is to make the people uh, go and uh, and always be in movement. It's uh, it's really made to deter the the statistics. So I would like to, to show you uh, what are what are making some citizens or some collective of artists to to show up um, all these uh, phenomena or to denounce it. The first one is a. Uh, a series of uh, photo montage by uh, Nicolas Moulin. He, 
he took uh, pictures of Paris and uh, and uh, and he photoshopped it uh, to to really show how uh, to really reveal the hostile side of his city in order to say uh, it's just a, a very large corridor <laughs> you cannot make anything with your friends uh, apart from walking or maybe going to to a cafe but uh, in the cafe you have to pay so you can uh, you can't uh, just sit uh, in the in the city and this one is very interesting and I want to show you the real video this is a video which was made by an artist made by the artist Gilles Paté and it's very awesome here it is. And this video was made in 2002. And this part the connective, which is a very late in this question of hostility. The fact is, thank you.
security is our main interest. I mean, this is the director of the subway company of Paris, meaning that uh, we always try to make the, the subway more and more, uh, more and more pleasant and, and, and so on. So, I really love this guy, <laughs> but I can't show you every video I found, unfortunately. And uh, this artist, this girl, is also very interesting because his, uh, his work is about creating costumes and clothes which adapt themselves to the urban forms and shapes of hostile benches or devices. And she lives in uh, Los Angeles, in the United States. This, this is a work by uh, a German, German artist called Fabian Brunzig. And uh, he also made a little video showing his, uh, his, this, his objects. You, you just have to insert a coin <laughs> into this, this little box. Then you have 10 minutes to sit. And then you have a little alarm who warns you to go away because the spikes are going, <laughs> going again. And uh, this is a, um, a student in, uh, in architecture in Hamburg, also in Germany. And uh, this guy tries to, to make com comfortable places in uh, like hostile places just to, to have a place to to just sit and look or talk with your friends. It is also a way to denounce a hostile, uh, hostile way of life in many cities. And also there is Florian Rivière who, who loves to hack the objects of the streets. For instance, he made a, a basketball ground uh, with a litter and here he uses the, the the stem uh, which was standing in the middle of the bench in order to make uh, something to, to rest. There are also more dark uh, interventions like uh, this one made by uh, the, the London Black Revolution Collective which is a, a collective of uh, anonymous people who do not want to reveal their identity and uh, their act actions are actually to, to make, for instance, to pouring concrete on uh, spikes in front of, uh, of, uh, in front of uh, a store. So it's uh, also public space hacking. Or also there are like this group of friends, space not spikes, also in London, who try to make comfortable a space uh, which was totally invaded by spikes. Like you can see in the photo, so they they built uh, like uh, a little library with a little sofa in order to <laughs> to, sit, to sit in the streets at this very place. And I try to finish my, my lecture by this image, which uh, illustrates a work by my friend Lana, who gave, according to me, the good side of urban furniture, because it is something which is made to get people together, and uh, according to me, urban furniture was not, is not made for dividing people and, uh, and, uh, and uh, hiding poverty and so on. So, thank you for listening and uh, sorry for my English. <laughs> if you have any questions. Um, yes, you've been showing us uh, examples of kind of um, how to prevent undesired actions uh, in the city. Like, we deal mostly with poor people and exclusiveness and things like that. But there are also means uh, that acts, acts in another way, uh, like here in Kiev, uh, if you had a chance to, to walk around the city, see that it's, like, the sidewalks are full of cars, 
mm -hmm. and the space has been heavily commercialized, mm -hmm. so you can't, you, you know, like the average people cannot use the public space without paying, or this space mm -hmm. is barely comfortable. Uh, so, and there are also means, you know, to prevent, uh, you know, the, the actions the other way. Uh, like, do these means have any kind of like fall in your classification, or mm -hmm. do they have any place, or how do you? How do you in fact, it was very difficult to 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 stop a category of things. Mm -hmm. Obviously, um, the, the security planning is very related to. Other things, and I, am, I agree that uh, yeah, the, the very strong presence of cars everywhere also also uh, goes into that uh, that way. And, uh, there is also the, the question about um, can I sit here if I do not have money? I mean, there are lots of uh, um, terrace. Terrace? terrace in the city. You can sit there if you have money. And you come to drink something, but uh, like but if you if you see a city uh, from the mind of a person who does not have any money, you in fact you only have uh, benches on the ground to, to sit and to stay. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. And uh, as I understand, yeah, I saw those kind of the devices uh, that made for against homeless people. And the idea is, as I understand, is saying just like go away. And uh, here's the idea: what if uh, just put a sticker with this uh, slogan, go away everywhere where this device is, is uh, placed, so everyone will understand what does it really means mm. to those people. Just go away, go away. Hold the city uh, with these stickers or go away. It's like it's the same. It's very unlogical because it's just go away uh, from our field of vision. It's just uh, yeah. It's like a, it's if they like want to. It's nice uh, thing to make a dialogue, right? Dialogue uh, with them, uh, with people who are doing these devices. So if on these devices just put this sticker, go away. Everyone will understand what it really means. Yeah, but when you really want to sleep uh, in the night in the city, uh, you. You just don't care about what is written on the... Yeah, but the whole other people who have money, they need to understand how it looks for those people who don't have money. Uh, how the yeah. city looks for yeah. them. Like, it's just everywhere is the phrase, go away. And it's like a horrible nightmare. <laughs> it would be a good thing to make people realize about that. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's okay. excursion into Lviv, it was uh, it was not about like homeless people, but it was about uh, for the security guy, 
not to fall asleep during his duty, the chair was also made un really uncomfortable. So you can see it, you can rest for maybe 20, 30 minutes, but you can fall asleep and rest after. And actually, I want to ask you about, to tell more if you mention it during your research, about like this common sense which do support these devices and these like uh, kinds of art uh, furniture, city furniture. What to do like the common sense is about that we need to clean up the city, that we need to like yeah. organize it, uh, order it, and we you can even t uh, say that urban theory of oh, some time. lines is going so so like. Have you faced this and how it works like with this device? I understand that your interest was just opposite one, but like how, what was interesting for you? Some architects say uh, you, the problem is that architecture studies are not talking about this aspect of the thing. So many architects say that the problem is not the, the existence of such devices. The problem is just that it is not, there is no discussion or talk about this problem in architects, in architectural school. So architects globally don't know how to, how to manage this problem. They just, uh, they, they just know it uh, in the process of the project and they are not really uh, prepared to it. And the other problem, according to me, is that uh, the persons which are planning all this uh, or these devices in the city are not persons which are formed to, to, to architecture or, or urbanism. They are mainly uh, policemen or it's not in their profession to design space. They, they are not formed to it, so they, they, don't, they, they don't have, uh, for them, uh, they just have uh, to, to, to make uh, decrease uh, the number of uh, criminality, so they, they put uh, these devices, but they are not uh, professionals of uh, urban planning and design. I was just wondering about uh, what today, like you are telling us that uh, like, uh, this is part of the like, uh, decision of the municipalities, right? But I was wondering about citizens. Is there any like, debates in the media, on the television, and how do you actually inhabitants of the cities? receive these uh, changes? Do they react in a certain way? Perhaps they just uh, voice some kind of protest. So, uh, yeah, because this is like incursion into the public space. This is expropriation of the mm -hmm. public space. Yeah. And uh, I was wondering, for example, how do uh, young people react? Uh, perhaps like university students or anyone? Indeed, uh, the, main, the main space of reaction is internet. I found so many articles talking about this subject, this topic, um, even uh, humoristic websites, which were a lot of people are posting pictures on Twitter or so on, Facebook of uh, this problem. But in the TV, uh, the, the TV really is not a, is not a medium talking about it. But I, I found in my research that internet was really the main place where people could react to this problem and they were they react even more in the in internet than in real life about this problem because very few people in the street are like uh, I see this bench, it is a scandal. It's a very the internet is a very important place for that, for reacting together to this problem and to even the all the art all the artists I showed you before, they are known because their videos or their photos are shown on the internet. So without internet, uh, I thought the, I think the problem would, would be maybe less showed or if people really talk about this problem thanks to the internet. such a benches on the bus stops and new bus stops yeah. have this small tiny metal things yes. like which is really and hard we to have see. actually a billboard here uh, fencing uh, which uh, protect the billboard 
with a lot of no stickers, no advertising. Mm -hmm. Just here, down on the CRC center, you can just look around. You just can't see those kind of things if you don't watch, if you don't know that they exist. This perspective. Actually, they exist in the city. And even like our ordinary normal benches, like with these lines, uh, they're not really comfortable at all for sleeping. If they will be like flat, it will be more comfortable. If they will be soft, <laughs> it will be even better. But they are also not comfortable for people like me, small one, because they're too high for ordinary people. They are not comfortable for all. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like actually I haven't think about this kind of benches. It's something like not comfortable before this lecture. Uh, because the level of high you can control because of that done and so on, but this like tradition of putting Bruce, not the flat uh, yeah. wooden stick, is really like something in our minds as a normal bench, but it's not like and the, yeah, and the garbage near the <laughs> bench also, mm. like put it mm. you off, like just sit for a couple of minutes, but then stay here, there's a mountain of garbage. <laughs> Why should we have those kind of things? I really like it from the same thing we have in a, um, like, uh, in a tube. We have that, we have that um, tubes with uh, all flat seats, but now we have like European designed flats with separate seatings, mm -hmm. and I find it really uncomfortable then mm -hmm. because we uh, get used to the, those flat things, and it was really comfortable to have more uh, seats in common. Like you can move your uh, chain sitting uh, sit against, but now it's really hard to put your um, stuff and your body. <laughs> so. And I was also wondering when you use the term uh, dispositive. If you were using it like according to, because this positive is not just a French word for us, it's like a concept, of yeah, philosophical yeah. one. So, like, does it refer to your research and in which way, like, you explain it? Because it comes from Foucault and you know, like, uh, because what? I mean, like, do you use this term in the usage and theoretical perspective for your work as uh, at the whole? Thing which ah. do Foucault use this and like then Lacanian theory? And it's so. the world of a common language, but in French. Hmm? Dispositif is a, a commonly used word, but uh, very often people don't want, uh, don't know of which, what's, what term to use to, to talk about this. They, most of the people say it is, oh, this is an anti homeless uh, thing, or oh, this is an anti anti skateboarding thing. So the problem is really that there is a problem of language about it. So the, the, there is a very precise term about the method of, uh, of uh, planning and uh, of uh, designing. It is a crime prevention through environmental design. But in many languages and in many countries, people don't have a precise term to talk about it. So it goes in the in the way that it is hidden. It is very hidden to the. It is it is made for uh, for people for uh, like on the way, I and mean, it is also made for people to not talk about it because there is there there, there is not exist a, a clear term to talk about it. So. It was very necessary to, to find a word and the concept who was, uh, yeah, really uh, accurate to talk about. But I don't know, uh, I use a French word because uh, this is my language, but uh, if you, I, I, I am sure that in English the right word would not be a device. I think this would be another, another word, another concept. It also. Uh, the term of Latin uh, signification of uh, the God, which uh, that all this year presentation beginning with uh, with this term. The Latin term is included into the French. Yeah, and this talks really nice about the main person, the person which want to control all those kind of stuff. 
It refers to the. It refers to the Latin signification. The history of the of the word. So the history I, of the word. I, yeah. I include the also the the old meanings and the ancient, uh, like a, a bit like a concept. Like a God which needs to guide people to and guide people to, to the good behavior. And to to the good, and what is a good behavior? Maybe it's a good behavior to sleep in the street, or maybe not. Yes. But by deterring bad behaviors, indirectly it, uh, it imposes good behaviors. So we do not know exactly what are those good behaviors, but we are very sure about the bad behaviors. This is the, the, the problem. Thank you. 